Welcome to the Campervan channel, the YouTube channel for all things Campervan. Now, the classic models are extremely popular and the T3 or T25 is often considered the entry level if you're going in for a classic. But if you buy one, what are they like to live with? When we were originally looking for the bus, we were looking for the T2, but we were priced out of the market really. So this was a nice entry level vehicle for us to get at. We went to a party, they had a Volkswagen. They showed us the Volkswagen. Six months later, we had one. It was that simple. <laughs> it's in my blood. As a child, I would holiday in little split screen buses with mum and dad, my brother and sister. So it stayed with me and uh, I've always had a Volkswagen really ever since then. We'd never had one of these before. We've had a few split windscreen buses, uh, bay window buses. Uh, they, and we'd never had a Type 25, um, so it was kind of an impulse buy by my wife, um, and we've never really looked back. It's 33 years old. It was originally uh, owned by a flower company, so it was just a transporter, a van. I believe a company called EMC converted a few. It's a VW T25, it's got a DG 1.9 water-cooled engine in it. It's 1985, it's where the crossover is, so it's, there's an early type and there's a, a late type. So it crossed over in 1985. Finding one can be a little bit of a chore, because it's, you've got to do a lot of research. There's some bad ones out there, there's some good ones out there, there's some outstanding ones out there. All depends on your budget. Um, so yeah, it took us possibly three or four months of research to get the right one. It's always worth having, getting taking someone with you that you know. And um, that's what we did, we had people to look at it for us. Um, just be careful, be really careful. What condition was this in when you got it? It was in really good condition. You know, everything worked, it was fine. Apart from breaking down within, uh, you know, a mile or two of buying it. The price uh, vary, like many classic vehicles, from, you know, very, very, very cheap prices. 500, 1,000 pound, 2,000 pound, upwards. I mean, I've seen them for sale at 20, 30,000 pound. All related to condition? Yeah, and model, I would have thought. Yeah, I mean, synchro models, four wheel drive models might command a higher premium, especially if they've got some, you know, camping equipment attached as well. So very variable pricing, I guess. They handle better on the road, steering wise, the older than, than the older ones. ones. Yeah, they're significantly better. What I like about the T3 is there's a little bit more room in the T3 than there is in the T2. So on a normal car, you, you, your gearbox is right underneath your gear stick. On these, your engine's at the back, so we have a big gear linkage that goes from front to back, so your gearbox can be what they call a little bit of a pudding. One of the odd things that we found about the vehicle at first, we're trying to figure out where the screen wash was, where we filled it up. It's actually under the floor on your passenger side. Um, we had to ask for information on that via the Facebook forum. Brake fluid and clutch fluid is actually behind the speedometer, which is a bit quirky. So you lift the plastic cover off over the dials, over the speedometer and clock, to find the brake and clutch fluid reservoir. And oil changes? Yeah, quirky. You can pour it in the top of the rocker cover or you can pull an extendable plastic pipe out of the number plate, housing at the back and pour your oil in there. Good fun once you've had plenty of practice. It's had various bits and bobs repaired along the way, which include a new gearbox. Yeah, the bottom gear destroyed itself. They have a crawler gear on this particular bus, so it's like a five speed, a five forward gears, and the first gear is a crawler gear, which is very, uh, very low geared, great for mountain passes. Um, but the gearbox self-destructed and uh, we had to have another one rebuilt. We've changed the, um, the coolant pipe from front to back there, stainless steel. We've changed the fuel tank. You know, how long's a piece of string type of thing? You can go for whatever in a day and main thing's safety. Fuel, make sure, make sure you get your fuel, your hoses sorted and let's be safe. <laughs> I fitted a new fuel tank, a few cam belt changes. The last one I tackled myself and that that obviously went okay because it's not blown up yet. Just a reminder that there's more information and advice on the T3 and all the other VW transporters in this book by yours truly.
What sort of commitment is it money-wise? When we first started, somebody said to us with one like this that you're looking at about £1,000 a year to keep it on the road. For body work, giving it? Well, not just body work, but for, for things in general that may go, because they're old buses, like I say, it's 1985. But it's not cost us anything like £1,000 a year. So, again, it, it could probably cost you £2,000 a year, it depends on the state of the bus. Been really lucky, I think, with this one, because she, she's not gone wrong. We've got to get home yet, but... <laughs> The bodywork can be a nightmare. That is the biggest key, I think. The mechanics you can get done, welding and fabrication and parts can be a big bind for people. For instance, I've done the wheel arches on this, I've got the door runners to do, we've patched the back, and this is a good one. There's some that can be a lot worse. I have welded it twice, and that's just on the seat belt mountings on the top of the front wheel arches. But welding will be, uh, in the picture pretty soon. The seams are starting to, to rot on the back. Uh, in fact, the whole structure's uh, you know, gradually rotting away now. What are these seams and what's the, what's the issue with them? The seam is created where two panels are butt welded together uh, and then there would have been a seam of sealant run up that uh, seam to prevent any water getting in. But I guess the corrosion starts behind and it's just a trap for corrosion where two panels are welded together. There's a multitude of seams on the bus really, especially around the back quarters. There are seams where all the panels are welded together. We've seen quite a lot that they had what they call seam rash, and, they, and that can be a bind again. But it's nothing that can't be worked out, it's going to be worked on. You've got a, an engineering background, but what about somebody who hasn't got the skills for welding or anything like that? A lot of it you can do yourself, yeah, just watching YouTube channels, etc. There's lots of information out there. There's some Volkswagen groups and, and people get their heads together and people, if you've got certain skills, they share skills. Um, so they work on each other's vans. So that's a really good idea. Otherwise it can be quite expensive. You've got to put it into a garage. When it comes to engines, this is a 1.9 DG water-cooled. It was air-cooled before this. Some people will upgrade and they'll put Subaru engines in there, they'll put Golf GTI engines in there. And what goes wrong with the engines? Why, why do people not like the old ones? Underpowering is a problem with them, um, so that, that can be an issue, especially going uphill. Um, and again, it depends if you've got water tanks on there, you've got a full fuel tank, it goes slower and slower. The problem with this particular bus is the fact that it's got a modified engine, so it's out of a Golf or a Passat. It's a 1.9 turbo diesel engine. Originally they were a 1.6 turbo diesel. If you want to be doing 78 mile an hour, good luck to you. We don't, we, we like to chill out and 55, 60 will do and it gets us everywhere. The general Volkswagen sound is what I like. I just like when you start that engine up, it's just manana, manana, it's lovely, beautiful. If anybody's thinking about getting a T3 and they're actually sitting on the fence, should or shouldn't, or, what I would actually say was just do it. Make sure you've got a good mechanic or, or you can keep an eye on your, you know, your, your servicing yourself um, and also possibly look for one that's not too rotten, uh, that's in reasonably good condition body-wise. For me, it wouldn't have been feasible if I hadn't had the mechanical knowledge I've got and I've developed over the years. I think it would be uh, you know, massively expensive otherwise. It's changed our lives, our weekends, people we meet. It's always meeting new friends every weekend. Everywhere we go, people stop us and want to talk to us about the bus. It's a, it's a wonderful lifestyle and it gets you out in the fresh air.